Welcome, friends. Welcome, friends. Welcome, one and all. Blair Ballard, the bon vivant, very much at your service. I do hope you're all in the finest of fine forms. Now, it's a big year this year for Goldfinger fans. It's the 60th anniversary of the film that really broke the mold. It gave us gadgets, the DB5, a great a villain in Goldfinger, obviously an iconic henchman in Oddjob. We're here actually for a 007 GB James Bond fan club meet here in an incredible vault in the basement of a bank. We've got some great fans to meet. We've got Norman Wansell, who won the, the Oscar, in fact, for Goldfinger sound editing. Let's pop in and say hello to some of the guys. Come on, let's go. Warren Ring was off cue the music. Gentlemen, great night. It's been fun, hasn't it? So yeah. far. Yeah. And we've only just begun. I know, we've only just begun. <laughs> so look, um, this is the first event for tw uh, 2024. We had a great year. Of, you had a great year for 20. You both had well, a great year. We, for, yeah, for we're all members. We're all members of the same club. How many members are, have you got now for. Oh, uh, so we had 561 last year, which made us the, long, uh, the largest club by. Um, like a multiple of two. This year already, in the first month, we've had over 350 people rejoin. And the, the, according to my fellow presidents, Luke and Marcus, they said that's the fastest resubscription rate. They've never even hit out those numbers anyway. But the resubscription rate, the resubscription is, rate is, is off the charts. But don't forget, Warren had event of the year last year, <laughs> cue the music, and you know, this guy, he's in the RAF, he's a musician, he's a professional, he has a family. He takes time out of his day to do this stuff, and he put on a world-class event at the Indigo the O2 last year. We're a fan club. I'm a businessman. I'm I'm giving up as much time as Warren is. It's 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 not easy, but it's fulfilling when we get it right, isn't it? And you often, get it right. You get it right. Yeah, I often think we have long conversations sometimes. And in the day when we're both working, you know, and it's it, you kind of sit there thinking, "Cracky, Phil's got a business to run." You know, yeah. we have on the phone sometimes for an hour trying to sort out these events, different things. You it's know, crazy. It's, 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 it's intense. But it's fun, isn't it? It's brilliant. I don't. I I love every minute. So, so what's coming up this year then? Because you're doing... You know, they're, they're well, we have a golden weekend, Blair. We have a golden weekend. Yeah. And that's going to be something very special. Warren and I were... Back, back in October last year, we started to put the... the car, wheels in motion, yeah. that's it. Yeah. For bringing Maud and Brit over for the 50th anniversary of the Man with the Golden Gun. Maud Adams, sorry. She's my absolute favourite. Well, I mean, Octopussy... 
that you, you know, even even a non-bond work is exemplary. And it's not like they live around the corner. You know, these people live in LA. So bringing them over is expensive. And it's not something that I could do on my own for the club or that Warren could do on his own. So we thought, let's let's pool our resources. No, well, we, we almost struggled to do it together. You know, we yeah, had, it's had very to, expensive. We've had to really, really work on it for a good few We months. have, yeah. There were times where we were thinking, is it going to be Maybe not going to, yeah, yeah. So we're really, really chuffed with it over long. It's I'm, really exciting. I'm very excited for both of us, for the entire Bond community, because yeah. we have, I tell you, Brad, what we've got planned for that weekend is going to be exceptional. And the meat in the sandwich, we've got David Zeritsky with his Operation Goldlinger, so that if you can't get a ticket to mine, which sold out in 52 minutes, I know. and Warren's VIP sold out in the weekend as well, yeah. you can obviously you can still attend the concert. There are tickets for that. Yeah, we'll put the links down lots. below. Some, some, not lots. We've already been on sale. We'll put the links in the, in, the, in the description below, so if you want to get tickets, you can, you know, you can still you know uh, apply, but, but they are going fast. So, so we, yeah. people are going to get to have a experience with Morden Brit on Saturday, then Morden Brit are going to retire to get their well-earned rest ready for the concert the next day, and while they retire, we are going to host with David Zeritsky, or sorry, David Zeritsky is going to host... Operation Goldlinger, where we're going to have so much fun, everybody can just turn up at the Hippodrome, on the Lola Room. Um, don't get too much of a hangover there, because right the next day, you are going to want to be there for the concert. I mean, So tell me about the concert, though. What's going to be what's... Hand over to Warren, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. The, the concert, is it all... Is it going to be based around um, Man with the Golden Gun? Is that the, 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 the thrust? Well, we've got three anniversaries this year. We've got, we've got obviously, got Goldfinger 60, yep. which, whilst it's hard to find special guests, I mean, Phil's managed tonight, but there's not, obviously, that many of them around now, so we are going to market musically. 20 minutes of Goldfinger music and uh, I'd also say the author of Nuff 25 which oh. is really which has a very app, you know, with the Indigo, the old two. Yeah, I mean, exactly, that's, yeah, exactly. That's like a given. There's the PTS. music from there as well, and obviously the guests will be there. I think the great thing about this weekend is that we've kind of popped up together, the three of us, and actually made the whole weekend an integration where people have gone, you know, people come from a long way for these things, but actually they've got much more... That's it. it. See, it, it, it's, it's, it's... When you're going to come over for... When you're going to come over from, say, the United States or from Thailand or from Germany or whatever, the fact that you can come over for the whole weekend and have a, a three-point multi-experience is nothing short of fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. David, Warren and I, we, we, you know, we are doing this because we love Bond and because we love the people who love Bond. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to build something that, that just sort of blends in from one to the next to the next, it's exceptional. Yeah. This summer is something tonight has been absolutely fantastic, but you know, you've you've done it. But it's so important to have that space for foreign fans to come in that way. And ultimately someone's got to do it, someone's got to get off. If we don't do it, nobody else is doing it. No, so we're we... the ones that have the sleepless nights. <laughs> But I enjoy it. I mean, see, I mean, obviously, I'm just here as, as I've a, enjoyed it from the moment I got here. Yeah. The fact that I've only had two cigarettes, which is very low, based on the fact that it is quarter you to nine. You haven't killed anybody either. No, You don't no, know twice no. style. Having only two in the whole night is a testament to how busy we are and how much I want to make sure members are happy. And that's exactly the same at Warren's events. I watch Warren running around, <laughs> can you swear on this, like a blue ass fly, uh, to make sure that everybody's having the experience yeah. they want to have. Not for him, not for me, but for all of us. Now, Warren, can we briefly touch upon the awards? Because we kind of shared the awards. You know, you yeah. won the award. No, no. The, one, the, one, the video one was funny, so anyone watching didn't know, Blair's video won the award for best documentary. We got a golden bullet, yeah, for the best yeah. video for 2023, and then yeah. you I got the video. I can show you where to put that. <laughs> <laughs> it is, look, suppository, yeah. but vibratory yeah. as well, possibly. So I actually came up with the name Golden Bullet for Roland, because oh. I said, we need a better name, a snappier name than Bond Community Awards. 
so I said, yeah. call it the golden bullet. And he was like, it's a, it's dude, really, this is amazing. It's perfect. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. And it was well deserved for your video. It was, it was really cool. It was great fun. And we, were, we were both up for event of the year. Yeah. We were both up for man of the year. Yeah. Neither yeah. of us won no. the man of the year. Yeah. Zaritsky, Bloody Zaritsky. The tyrant. The tyrant. <laughs> he yeah. won that. Event of the year. You won it. I understand that. It was a big, big event. Way in excess of what we did. It was great fun there. It was a well-deserved event. I think every single event was done last year. Yeah. Really stepped up. We were we were sport for choice, really. Yeah. You, I mean, the, the Belfast event was incredible. But when we got to your event in October, I was simp that was the very first time I'd ever seen you perform. And I, same with me. Because I'd always like, been away, and yeah. I was blown away. Yeah. And I looked across at my vice president, Miles, he was enjoying himself. I looked across at Simon, our, our operations you know, project manager, project director. He was enjoying it. I mean, like, I mean, I'm talking like, mm -mm. and I can see really 007, Tom. He's like, yes, yes. And he's looking over me from six feet away, like, <laughs> exactly. Like this. Everyone I mean, was buzzing. Like, you put smiles on people's faces. Yeah. And you. I got a kiss from Christina Wayborn. Well, well that's, that's very special. Right I saw saw very special. Crikey O'Reilly. Anyway, look, I've got to say thank you to Phil and thank to Warren. You. I'll put links down below for all the events going on this year. Sign up as soon as you possibly can because they do get filled up really quickly. But for now, thanks to Phil and thanks thank to Warren. Thank you, Blair. Cheers, thanks cheers, to Blair. cheers. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. I'm here with Kieran and Tom from Rin Doublers. <laughs> How are we doing, guys? You okay? Yeah, very well. Yourself? Not too shabby. I mean, it's an amazing location they picked, yeah. and I'm feeling pretty bondy. Yes. You feeling pretty bondy? Absolutely. I, I love how, because it's a vault, there's no signal here. So everyone who's trying to pester me, they can't get hold of me. <laughs> and, and it means I can chat to everybody. This is All great. those adoring fans that no, just no, I'm sorry, no. it's my night. My night tonight. <laughs> I want my own time. Absolutely, yeah. Exactly. But I mean, your channel is obviously doing really, you know, really, really well. Yeah. Love your work. As I was saying to you earlier, I was swatting up on normal uh, one stool facts, but I was on the train and it's like an hour and 42 minutes. The interview, I was like trying to cram it in. It's like, come on, let's just get to the end. But before I was like at Paddington, I was like, oh my god, no, I haven't got it all. But amazing, you managed to eke out lots of amazing facts and details. Well, and it was an honor to meet him, first of all. To actually meet him in his home was amazing, oh. but it meant we could just sort of sit and chat. And there's loads of things you don't know about him. Like, obviously, we know about golf. Figure. Obviously, we know about some of the stuff he did Doctor No, but Never Say Never Again. I know. On Never Say Never Again. All the Conneries. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we, it, was a, it was an honour. And to see him tonight, and he, he remembers us, you know, we He's had a great so chat. He's so lovely. Again. He's such a lovely guy, isn't he? And one of the last surviving, you know, Goldfinger members, really. Alumni, Goldfinger alumni. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And just to see him, you know, with the Oscar on the 60th anniversary. Did you get to hold it? Did you hold Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Very special. Very heavy. Very special. Yes. You've got to be careful how you say it, though. You don't want to hold Norman's desk for too long. <laughs> I know what I mean. It's, it's, too long. it's a weighty tool. Yeah, exactly. uh, worth its weight. Worth its weight. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, but I mean, uh, holding an Oscar yeah. and, actual, and a yeah. Bond Oscar as well. The, I mean, the, the very first one. The first one. Yeah, how many Bond Oscars were there and, and how many have they been? Well, we tend to give it for best song all the time now, but apart yeah. from them, yeah, yeah, well, there was, yeah, Adele can, yeah, there's not Adele been many. Can. I think Thunderball won best effects, didn't they? Yeah, oh, yeah, the, the underwater yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, It's very rare. Yeah, yeah. Massive rare, deal, to be honest, yeah. Deal. But yeah, so that, holding that, yeah, it's a, it is an amazing, and he's such a lovely guy, as yeah, I say. Yeah. Really chatty, he yeah. really loves talking, he loves coming to these meets, he loves yeah, meeting Bond fans. Yeah. He's not one of these, some people, some of the, um, the, yeah. the Bond uh, alumni are a bit cagey, they don't really, you know, want to, you know, to, end, you know, to get with the fans and chat, but he's really like, yeah, yeah, anything you, you want to ask. Don't ask him about Quantum of Solace. <laughs> <laughs> he was not a fan. <laughs> well, is it the cutting? It's the cut, yeah, because yeah, it's really yeah, yeah, it's yeah, those jump cuts and like, oh my god! Watching because I did a, a, a video with the um, using the the car chase at the beginning. Yeah. And going through that, we were doing a car. It was with John Reynolds, who's here, going Aston. Yeah. And I was like pretending I was in the car. Really well done, Gavin. My my editor was brilliant. The cutty put me in there, and even my face in the the, the mirror. Yeah, the he managed yeah. to do my my. Face. But it's just so busy. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm not a fan. Not a fan Tell of that. Tell the story first of all. Yeah. I, I love 
Quantum. So I'm a big fan of Quantum. Above Spectre and No Time to Die for me. Yeah, totally agree. I agree. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Especially when you watch it as a continuation of Casino Royale. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Sure. It's like Even the B though, side. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even though the tie and clothing was slightly different, you know, after haircut. Yeah. Haircut. Yeah. 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 Apart from that, yeah, it's a con <laughs> continuation. So look, guys. I mean, what are we feeling about Goldfinger? Are we? Is it, how does it rank in your list? Kieran? It's, the, it's the definitive bond because it's the first film which has every single element that we love and know today. Yep. It's got the pre title sequence. It's got the title song. It's got the perfect gun barrel. It's got Shirley Bassey. I mean, bombastic, over the top. What more could you ask for? Great henchman. Absolutely. Great villain. villain. The story. Aston Martin. And it's actually quite nice to have a Bond story that takes us out of Spectre. Yes. Yeah. Because it's completely independent. It's fantastic. Do you exactly. Wa watch it today with Bond fans. Yeah. Everyone laughed at the same point. Yeah. Yeah. We, still, we know, we the, know the film, but everyone's yeah. still laughing. Exactly. And we're still laughing exactly. and appreciating it. And yeah. Norman was brilliant. Yeah, you've yeah. yeah, seen like, him watch it. Because yeah. he likes to see, you know, he said before, you know, he's never had a chance to actually let it wash over him and actually yeah. see it as a yeah. fan or as a Norman fan. So he was, he was that's because this is my favourite bit with the country. <laughs> <laughs> I yes. saw in your video yeah, about it. how you know yeah. how you got this captured the sound effects of the yeah. country. But you know, he was really enjoying it. And you think you've got an Oscar for this, you surely <laughs> must know this film inside and out. But no, he's like, I was watching it as a fan, it was just brilliant. The answer, oh. yeah. And the biggest the biggest film for us, he was sat two seats in front of us. And to see him watching the film yeah. on which he worked, yeah. what his mouth was open, he was like Oh, that's amazing. Oh, it was so cool. But so to cool. think that at 60 years old, some of the people there were in the 20s today. Yeah. That film is going to live on and live on. So whether or not it's your favourite film, it's probably made the biggest impact on the of any Bond film. So it's set in the mould. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Sean Connery was perfect. He looks a million dollars. He's well within his right to play the part by this yeah. point. And he carries himself beautifully. Absolutely. So Couldn't agree me, more. It is the definitive Bond. So is it top three for you? It wouldn't be in my top three. Okay. I'd certainly say top ten. Yeah. But it's the definitive film. When you yeah. think of Bond, what do you think of? Goldfinger. Exactly. And we're here 60 yeah. years on. Long may it live for another 60 years and beyond. Absolutely. Indeed. Bond are probably one of the Bonds that we saw most as a kid. Yeah. And one of the Bonds you'd show non-Bond fans. I'd say, is this you know, Yeah, series. exactly. If you want to ease yourself in, yeah. I would say Goldfinger, Spy Love Me, and maybe Golden Eyes, the three I would say. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. talk about Absolutely. before. Yeah. yeah. Those yeah. three came Those up. three, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would definitely say that. Great more. So what's the plan for this year? Have you got anything coming up that we can you can tell us about? Yeah, well, we've got some interviews in the bag. We've got some... We're starting our Living Daylights review, but the Down of the Day review took a year to record. <laughs> so we've only just released that. It's 17 hours long. So t take your time. There's no rush. Yeah, yeah. There's plenty of stuff to listen to. Yeah. And we did it over such a long course of time. We started doing the same jokes. We'd forgotten that we said them. We started saying the same facts about the film. Like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, my God, that's, so, that's amazing. So oh, apologies right. for that. <laughs> it's always a pleasure, Tom. No, great yeah. to see you, Kieran. You too. Okay. Wonderful stuff. Keep great up the great work. You too. Great stuff. Winner. Winner of the award. Winner. Win oh, no, but you, you're you a winner as well. We're both winners. Everyone's a winner. Anyway, <laughs> great stuff. Thanks for having us. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here with Steve Descripta. Your handle on Instagram is? At London Bond. Absolute legend. We saw you we briefly at the Key to Music. Yeah, what a great show. Fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. Cannot, absolutely cannot wait for this year, the O2. It's going to be a big year for big Bond events. It is. It's going to be a big weekend that weekend. I know, there's Three a lot of events going on. in one weekend. What are you going to be going to? All of them. Hey, of course. Oh, <laughs> hey, oh. That, that got... weekend has been earmarked from now for Bond. I know, it's, it, we've got a lot going on. It's sixth anniversary of Goldfinger. We've got the 50th for, obviously, Man of the Golden Gun. Yep. You were at tonight. We went We went to just come to the Prince Charles uh, Cinema. Yeah. I was sitting next to Norman Wanstall, who we'll get a chat to in a minute. I was sitting on the other on side. On the other side. And, yeah, absolutely fantastic to see Goldfinger on big screen. I've never, do you know, personally, I've never seen it on a big screen, but um, it was fantastic. It was so wonderful. Norman was nudging me, going, I love this bit. I love this bit. This is a bit one. The sound effect, the crushing of the car, that was a really difficult thing to do. What an absolute legend. One of the Oscar, obviously, for it. So, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
boy's done good, but a lovely, charming, charming guy. We're gonna I mean, when are you ever going to be able to say that you've done that again? I know. What are your thoughts about, I mean, about the, so all the events you're going to? Which one really stands out for you? It's got to be the Concord event. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely yeah. got to be the Concord event. My father designed and built part of Concord, um, the nose moves, and no he built some way. part of the movement. So for me, like, it would be, I've never been up close with Concord. So as soon as I saw that event announced in the Concord hangar, I had to know. And what do you think about the venue we're in tonight? I mean, what's Absolutely in Absolutely love it. That's Pretty the best incredible. thing about these 007 GB events is they take you to places that I didn't even know existed. I'm a resident of London. I've lived here my whole life. And I had no idea that this place existed. It's uber cool. Everything right down to the chandeliers, the wallpaper, the bar, the decor. Absolutely amazing. Brilliant. What a great event. Thanks, Steve. No problem. See Pleasure. You soon. Cheers. I'm finally, finally finding in the chance to meet Scarlett, who I've seen and uh, on Facebook, we're friends on Instagram, but we've never actually met. So tonight has been the night, and it's been a great venue, it's been a great evening, hasn't it? Of course, yeah, yeah. This is so cool. I've never, I've never heard of this place. I've never been in anything like this. It's really, really cool. I mean, Phil and the guys at um, 007 GB, the James Bond fan club, have done a sterling job of actually finding a very bonding location. It's got that whole Fort Knox vibe, it's got gold, it's got luxury, it's got the vault feel, it's brilliant. Anyway, um, we've been chatting this evening about our favourite bonds. I mean, you're, where are you leaning towards? Who's your favourite bond? What's the kind of era you like to go for? Uh, I think my favourite is definitely Pierce Brosnan. He's the one I grew up with. GoldenEye was the first film I saw, hoping maybe as a club we'll do something next year, because that will be the 30th anniversary of GoldenEye, right? Perfect. Yes. So, um, yeah, I mean, and I grew up, you know, the, the gold, uh, GoldenEye on Nintendo 64 was a big thing. Um, so, I mean, he's, Pierce Brosnan was so cool. Moving forward. Yes. Where would you like the franchise to go? What are your What are your thoughts about how they're gonna Are they gonna just cut up the have the the Daniel Craig universe just take it out and just carry on from where Brosnan left off and have just another Bond and we just slip straight into the role? Or yeah, I mean I think we need to bring a bit more fun back and yeah. less of the continuity between films because I personally believe that a lot of the success has come from the fact that you don't need to go back and watch it from the first it's not like you know like, like if you were to get into line of duty mm. you'd have to go really all the way back to the to very the first series one to and, you know. understand so I think that's where that's where a lot of the success has come from is that they are standalone films and not not having this going back and forth between yeah you know, our story this. arcs you know so you want like missions everyone's a mission yeah, and you're like and you know a bit, um, have one be a bit more cooler and just sort of get on with it and like, have like, like less mental health problems because we've got that in the real world we, we don't, want to escape we, we want we fun we don't want that in our cinema exactly I mean there's a, there's a time and place where you can watch those kind of films but not in Bond don't make don't make it too dreary I want to be I want to lead the cinema pumping the air and, you know yeah. yes Yes, we won. We had fun and you know, exhilarated and believe it or high, not like oh Kevin the Kevin the teenager. Yes. Don't want to do that. And we look. It's been a long night. But Scarlett, it's been it's so nice to meet you finally. Yeah, and, and nice to meet you too, Blair. Great stuff. Great. <laughs> cool, cool. Awesome. Great stuff. The winner is Norman Wanstall for Goldfinger. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's very difficult to say thank you as sincerely as I'd like to now. But I'm a technician, so maybe I can leave the eloquence to the artists that follow. But on behalf of the sound departments that I've worked with and my production company and myself, may I thank you all very sincerely for this tremendous honor. And what's more, may I thank you for the opportunity of coming to your wonderful country. I think for my wife and I, this trip is going to be the greatest experience of our lives. Thank you very much indeed.
I'm here with Oscar winner Norman Wonstall. Thanks so much for taking the time to have a quick chat to us. No, the pleasure is mine. We, we were sitting next to each other watching Goldfinger recently at the, um, the, the Prince Charles Cinema. Yes, we did. Yeah, it was quite an experience. It was one of the best Bond experiences of my life, having an Oscar winning, you know, you won it for Goldfinger, obviously, for sound editing and, you know, and you're nudging me going, this is my favourite bit now, the bit of crushing... Winning it for, for Goldfinger, what moments, you know, making the film were the most memorable? I mean, that was it back in the, obviously, the 60s. Nowadays, we can, you know, digitally, you can tweak things, and it's much easier for, for, for guys in the industry and the sound departments to, to recreate sounds or find sounds. How difficult was it back in the 60s for you to, to find the sound that you need for, you know, a particular... Like, the, I remember you talking about Dr. No. Yes. Your, one of your favourite sounds was the, him crushing the... Crushing of the... Yeah, the idol in his metal hand. Usually when a man gets in my way... How did that come about? How did you find the right sound for well, that? Well, luckily, what happened was the only reason Peter Hunt was able to promote me and got to know to the sound effects editor because they couldn't afford two sound editors. It was just ridiculous. The only reason he promoted me was because I worked on three major feature films from one of the finest sound editors in the country, a man called Winston Ryder. And one of the things he taught me was, Norman, when you got a difficult sound, don't keep plugging away trying to create it. Create all the different elements that you think might contribute. You go into a, a mixing theatre and you try different combinations until you get the one that you know is the best. And that's typical of, of the crushing of the thing. I, I would have, there were probably, it doesn't sound like it, there were probably three different elements there that we mixed together to get exactly the right noise. Let me guess, one of them must have been sort of crushing a can or...? Yeah, crushing a can, yeah. But it's just so much more deep and, like, you can... Obviously, you've got to get the sense of his power into that sound. It's a, it's a you know, it really is a power well, play a clip of it after we've chatted, but it's like got that real energy to it. Yes, but I think what, what makes it so special for me is the fact that when he dropped it, the weight of that hitting absolutely amazing. I keep thinking, how did I do that? How did I get that weight that, uh, to make that sound? When you have recording theatres, you have so many props, and you try this, you try that, you try that, and suddenly you say, yes, we've got it, move on. Talking about a weighty thing, this, this, and Oscar, thank you very much, yeah, I'd like to thank my family and friends and the director and obviously the Academy for the... How amazing, it's really, really heavy. Is that something that people comment on when they, when they, when they lift up your Oscar? I think what it is, people are so, so elated when they win, they, 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 they have... <laughs> it's like light as a feather, yeah. Yeah, they don't indicate how heavy it is. Unbelievable to have an Oscar in my hand and to have sat through Goldfinger with, you know, and watching it with you, that was a real moment for me. Um, but is it right that some of the effects that you used in Goldfinger and other other Bond films as well, because you were in all of the, the the sound for all of the Connery Bond films, that's right. That's right, yes. In, and also, the, yeah, um, Never Seen Ever Again as well. As it happens, yes. I mean, um, the effects that you use, though, sometimes, because now, as I say, nowadays, they're much, much easier to, there's a whole sand bank of you know, digital files you can download. Um, is it right that some of the sounds you used were actually from toys or from you used kind of a, a things that we we wouldn't expect to actually the, the sound of, of, of Odd Jobs hats, for example? Can you tell us to what, how you got to that sound of the Swiss of yes. Odd Jobs hat.
yes. So, so often, we used to go to sound effects libraries where they had so many different sounds. But in the case of, of that hat, I, I look back now and I remember saying to my assistant, please go around all the sound, all the toy shops and ask them if they still got two sounds, two gadgets that we had as children. To my amazement, he came back with both of them. And one of them was, was like a disc with string going through the centre. And as children, we used to love it. We used to pull all that out and it used to spin. And sure enough, that was one of the basics. He found, he found one. one. Yeah. So I went in, recorded it, and that was one of the basic sounds of that flying through the air. And there was another one. There was another one was um, a piece of metal that was twisted all the way down, and we had a little propeller at the top that we used to send all the way down to the bottom. And as kids, we used to push that up, and when it left the top, it was spinning like Oh, it was like a, like a sycamore kind yeah. of like. Oh. We found it was high. Oh. Oh, with the mic to get the sound? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. That was two sounds. The most important one was the one when it left his hand. And I said, we've got to make this sound very sinister. We tried so many different things. And in the end, I've got a, a, a carpenter's saw. And we put the carpenter's saw on the fence like that and we twang the bottom. And we said, yes, oh, we got it. it. We got it. Oh. Oh, we so tried cool. so many things, and that, even though most people probably don't hear that noise, I hear it, and it's there, and, and it, when it leaves its hand. But when you're, when you're, when you're, I mean, in, in everyday life, are you, um, when you're, when you're just. Just walking around, you go, oh my god, that's that sound I could use that for a particular, you know. I mean, is that how your brain works? Have you got a certain ear for that? Is that how you, you know, you, you analyze the world and the, you know, what, because when we were, when we were watching the film, you're watching the. I mean, you said this is my favorite scene, it's my favorite bit with the crunching the the, the um the, when they're crunching up uh, the car with Solo's body inside and the gold inside and the, the trash compactor squishing down the on Goldfinger. And you go, this is my favorite scene, and that's that was quite a you know. A Strange. I thought, oh, you just put a microphone to the actual to the real machine, and you'd hear that sound. But you, you didn't do that. You went, you heard something else, didn't you? Yes. I always knew what I needed to make the, to make a particular scene right. And in the case of the crashing of the of the uh, car, the one thing I was missing was these jaws coming up and going down. That was the most important sound of all. I had all the others I'd worked out, that was fine. And one day I was working away and I said to my assistant, what's that noise out there? They said, oh, don't worry, Norman. There's some blokes doing some maintenance. And I said, yeah, I know, but listen to that noise. So I rushed out and they had this machine that was making just the noise I was looking for. I said, please, don't, don't stop, don't go away. I rushed back and um, to see my recordist, he said, Norman, I can't help you, we're busy. I said, well, have you got a machine I can do it with? He said, no, I've only got this toy machine I bought for my kid. I said, well, will it record? He said, well, it will, but it's only a toy. Give it to me. I rushed out, held up this tiny, tiny mic, looking very professional. And when I offered it up to the sound mixers, I thought they were going to say, Norman, what is this to do with me? But they didn't. So that's what they used in the film? They used it in the film. Yeah. From a toy? It was, it was just the one the one thing I needed. Was the, that, the, 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 the hydraulics, the, the, the lifting? Yeah, they're up. like jaws coming up. But so that was cool. recorded on a... On a, on a yeah, on a toy. Who knew? Who knew? Oh, my 
God. Now, I mean, what's your proudest moment in uh, all your, I mean, because how many films have you done? I mean, the sound well, world. No, no doubt at all. In Doctor No, the most difficult sound of all was when Bond at the end goes onto the gantry and he turns that wheel. And the whole thing explodes and everybody rushes out. I tried for weeks to find a machine that we could we could do what he does. Yeah, 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 yeah. We couldn't do it. And, and we'd reached the point where we were about to mix that reel. And I was up to here. I've never forgotten it. In desperation, I went to the maintenance guy in the sound department of Homewood. And I said, please, I'm in terrible problems here. He said, I'll do my best. I couldn't believe it. Two days later, he called me to the theatre. And there was this extraordinary bit of gadgetry, bits of wire, bit. I said, oh, he said, no. He pointed to a switch and I switched it on. He went, bum, 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 bum. I said, yeah, but he said, ah, oh. <laughs> turn that there. And every time I turned it, it went up and up and up and up. <laughs> and up, and up. Even, it. Now, even now, I'm telling you, I'm getting hot. Well, oh, man. That's, I mean, but that now, saved yeah, my life. But the, nowadays, it's, you know, but do you think you've, you've influenced, the, the sounds you created or you sourced have influenced, um, you know, uh, where the way sounds are created and generated today? Yes. I mean, you've got, the, the, I mean, the I laser in, anything. But the laser scene in Goldfinger, we're watching as well, um, and, and nobody had ever seen a laser before, and never no. heard of laser, so. I knew what I wanted to sound it, and I, the only people I knew that could create it was the um, BBC Radio Public Workshop. Geniuses, absolute yeah. geniuses, yeah. And they weren't used to people like me in Peter films, but they listened and they said, well, we'll come and have a look. He came and have a look, I said, this is what I want. He went away and when it came back, it was exactly the sound they are. Genius, there's boffins in the, in the BBC. And then you only live twice when a rocket goes out of the, out of the, the crater, kind of like, yeah, 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 and it yeah. comes back down. I said to them, if you could just give me the basic sound, I will add to it all the things. They said, okay. And when it came back, it was a complete sound. They filled it, not everything you would want. The whole sound. Even, even Peter Hunt said, Norman, I'm crazy about your rocket sound. <laughs> I said, no, no, please, please. <laughs> but my job was to make sure we had the right sound. Exactly. How I got it was not. No one's Does job not was mine. Oh, but but so uh, looking at today's films, I mean, how do you? Are you retired now? Are you still working? Oh no, I've been retired for a long time. But when I went back from, um, I, 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 I left the industry, but they had this reason to come back and do Never Say Never Again. And as soon as I arrived, all my old colleagues said, Norm, the days when you used to mix six tracks together to make one sound, they're all over. We've got guys now, a hundred pound, pound an hour. They, you, you showed them what's on the screen, 
and they will make it for you. No way. Yeah. Oh, no. But that's back in, I mean, no, you never see it ever again, was, you know, decades ago. I mean, what about today, looking at films today? Do you, yeah. I mean, how would you find working today in today's environment? Would you would you enjoy the, 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 the kind of like the, the, the broader range of tools you might have to be able to use? I think it's very difficult for my generation because most of my guys left the industry when it went when it went digital yeah. and, and you've got you've got to understand um, how a hard drive works i have no idea how a hard drive works so i can't relate to modern day filming really i can only think back to the days when we have film and sound you know. and it's physical te you know physical reels of field film yeah. and, and, and you know yeah so but well thank you for what you've done there because i'm watching it today and it was one of the highlights of my Bond, you know, Bond life, sitting next to you watching Goldfinger. Oh, you know, no, really, it was an amazing moment. No, well, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed sitting back and, and letting it wash on. over you and just actually enjoying it for the film. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have to say, Norman, it's been you know, an absolute people pleasure. Like, people like you are a, a great value because you're a real enthusiast and you care, you know. And but you made the Bond franchise what it is. I mean, you were in all the Connery movies it's iconic and you've, you've set the you know the, the touch paper and you set the flames for us to, to enjoy the films and sound is so important in the in the Bond in the Bond franchise I, I understand what you mean but whenever you think of me always think of that wheel on the oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, look. I tried and tried to find a machine but nobody had one and, that, and we were getting to the point where we were dubbing that meal. I thought they're going to say, Norm, what? How can you leave it like that? But when that guy came up with that machine, I never Your life it. was saved. My life was saved. My reputation was saved. Well, look, on that note, I'd love to say thank you to Norman. Thanks to, to all the guys here at 007 GB, Phil and yeah, Miles. Yeah, and it's, it's been, been a great night, hasn't it? It's been yeah, good fun, hasn't it? But this has been Norman and Blair for the Bond Bond bidding you a very a bond farewell. See you later. I'm going to look after this Oscar now, okay? See you later. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, please do consider smashing those like and subscribe buttons. Do turn on notifications so you know when the next video drops. Also, leave some comments down below as to any videos you'd like to see in the future. But for now, stay safe, friends. We'll see you next time.